فقال ليس عندنا أكثر من خمس أرغفة وتمكتين إلا أن نسهب ونبتع طعاما لهذا الشعب كله لأنهم كانوا نحو خمسة آلاف رجلان فقال لتلاميذ اتكوهم فرقا خمسين خمسين ففعلوا هكذا وأتكعوا الجميع فأخذ الأرغفة الخمسة والسمكتين ورفع نظره نحو السماء وباركهن ثم كسرا وأعطى التلاميذ ليقدموا للجمع فأكلوا وشبعوا جميعا ورفعوا ما فضل عنهما من الكسر اثنتا عشر كف مملوءة Each a David, the prophet and king, may his blessings be with us all. Amen. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. comes in the name of the Lord, O Lord God, Savior and King of us all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, glory be to you. Apostles, when they had returned, told him all that they had done, and he took them and went aside privately into a deserted place belonging to the city called Bethsaida. But when the multitudes knew it, they followed him, and he received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God, and healed those who had need of healing. When the day began to wear away, the twelve came and said to him, Send the multitude away, that they may go into the surrounding towns and country, and lodge and get provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. And they said, We have no more than five loaves and two fish unless we go and buy food for all these people. For there were about five thousand men, and he said to his disciples, Make them sit down in groups of fifty. And they did so, and made them all sit down. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke them, and gave them to the disciples, to set before the multitude. So they all ate and were filled, and twelve baskets of the leftover fragments were taken up by them. Glory be to God. It's a, a great blessing to have with us today. This is the Ehab Wahim. Ehab Wahim, Shemmes Eklirik, 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 and he's going to give us the spiritual words today. Fadal. Kul Santai being the third Sunday of the month of Abib, and as we hear this gospel about the miracle of five bread and two fish. This gospel is very important in our church. We mention at least three or four times a year. Mention always in third 
Sunday of month of Abib, mentioned always in second month of Amshir, and every month if coming to five weeks, we have to mention this gospel. Why? Because it's a blessing gospel. We call it the blessing gospel because as we see, God he blessed the five bread and the two fish. Number two, this is the only story or only miracle happened before Jesus go to Jerusalem to be mentioned in the fourth gospel. Since Jesus went to Jerusalem, every 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 miracle happened after he go to Jerusalem mentioned in four gospels. This is the only one before he goes to Jerusalem mentioned in four gospels. Luke 9, 10 to 17, John 6, 5 to 14, Matthew 14, 13 to 21, and Mark 6, 30 to 44. You will find this is the only story mentioned. Why? Because it's very important to all of us. This is the introduction of Holy Communion. God, he wants to tell us, as I bless this five bread and two fish, I can bless any bread and wine in the altar to be my body and the blood. I have power to do this because he is God. I can do this like exactly I did this. And if you read the book of John chapter 6, he found this miracle in the top. And the end of the chapter, he talked about the, the Holy Communion. He said, whatever you eat, my body and the blood. Number two, in this story today, or miracle today, the important one for us, God, he tell us, I am the feeder of everyone. Everyone come to my church. If he's young, I can feed him. If he's old, I can feed him. If he's educated, I can feed him. If he's not educated. These 5,000 people, they have, the Bible mentioned men, but definitely because in that time they not mention number of women or kids, but everyone come and God feed him. God, he won't tell them, you're coming to me, you never going to go empty. If you come to me, you will have something. And in this miracle too, God was concentrated about something very important. That's what we talk about today. The first thing he said, and he received them and he spoke to them about the kingdom of God. These people coming to him, number one, he told them, you have to hear the word about kingdom of God. You need to hear the word of kingdom, uh, kingdom of God. Before he starts to heal them, before he starts to feed them, he told them, you have to hear the word of kingdom of God. Why? Because this is the eternal life. If you have a trouble or temptation or anything, you will hear the word of God can heal you. Sometimes we need to know, we need miracle. We have a problem. No one can fix it. God only can fix it. When we come to the church, we will hear the word of God. If God send you a message for someone to speak to you. The priest can give sermon, the deacon. The, the reading of the gospel can get your answer. So the very important, he warns him, number one, to hear the word of God. Number two, after he hears the word of God, he starts to heal their sickness. Everyone who's sick, he starts to heal him. Number three, he feeds them physically, and he feeds them, and they went to home, and they get sick. The word of God can do four points in our life. Number one, can I save your life? Number two, can I fulfill your needs? Number three, can I solve your tribulation? Number four, can heal you? Number one, the word of God can, can save your life. One of the servants, he went, they have like camp in Egypt, the servant camp, and one of them, they got message, the servant with him in Sunday school, he's not going to come today, we need him to come. So he went, he left the camp, he abolished from the people and said, I need to go to give the lesson. So he got two choices, to take the bus, to go quicker, or to get a small private car taxi to, to go to Egypt, to Cairo, to give the lesson. He started to break God, what you want me to do? He went to the bus, he get the ticket, everything. Ten minutes before the bus take off, he said, no, I need to take the small one. They told him, they can I come late? He said, no, I take this one. When he take the small car, after the bus left first, after he went back, he found that in the middle of the way, the bus already have accent, and they're picking up the people, some of them injured, and some of them dead. Someone he's going to talk about the word of God. God, he saved his life. So number one, if you talk about the word of God, God can save your life. How many times we hear a miracle happen with some servants? How many times we hear a miracle with people serving the word of God, God saves their life? You don't have to be a servant and have some the school. Word of God, if you see someone need, a word of God, give him, give him what he needs. If someone in trouble, someone in hospital, you talk to him about God, you comfort him, that's a word of God. People sometimes you hear a lot from outside. 
But when they hear the word of God can affect the life and they change the life. Some boy when he walking to Damascus, God stopped him. He was busy with a lot of stuff, but when God spoke to him, it changed all his life. How many people like people in Egypt, they read the Bible for first time to find a mistake in the Bible and the Bible hooks them and they change their life. But who gives him the Bible? This is the one God will bless him because he gave him the word of life. The word of God, it changes the life. So word of God, number one, can save your life. Word of God, number two, can save you from any tribulation. Any tribulation in your life, you found the answer in your Bible. You found the answer in sermon. You found the answer from someone give you advice from the Bible. We're starting to advise people a lot of stuff nowadays. But when the affecting word to change our life, this is the only word of God. Because word of God has no limits. It's going to be here and tomorrow and before and forever. Because they have no limits. Number two, the word of God can fulfill your needs. Number one, save your life, fulfill your, uh, your needs. One consecrated servant, he was serving in Swiss. Swiss is about maybe 200 kilos from Cairo or something like this. And this, he consecrated his life, you know, the church to give a servant consecrated his life, very, very little money. So he was serving the youth, and one day he coming to the altar, uh, to the altar and he worship. he has only one shirt for summer, his shirt cut. <clears throat> so he went to home very embarrassed and told God, I never asked you for something like this. But I never complain. But look, I can't do my service because the only shirt I have, this shirt cut. He got a winter shirt, heavy one, and to wear it in summer, you know, it's not practical and very hot. Anyhow, he got to do his service. In that day, they have a, another servant coming from another city to give a youth meeting. And he told him, you are this person by his name? He said, yes. He said, listen, there's someone send you an envelope. He said, who? He said, I don't know. Someone, he told me, you going to Swiss? He said, yes. He said, please, if you see this servant, give him this envelope. He found the envelope, he found the right money for him to buy a shirt. He never knew him, and the servant come and give him the envelope. He never knew him, because he's a servant of God. God, he looked after him. He looked after him for his need and for his spiritual too. So number one, the word of God can save your life. Number two, the word of God can fulfill your need. Fulfill your need. Do you think if someone serves him, he can leave him without food or leave him without clothes? We never hear. We never hear any church start to establish or do anything to stop for money. This is the last thing. I remember in Egypt when one day we're coming from, uh, you know, Abu Ghalam Seas and we have early mass. And Abu Ghalam said, we need like 5,000 pounds for some food for people to go to Easter tonight. Before we finish the mass, Abu Ghalam, he announced, I said, we got all the money. We never, never any service stop for money. God, he will fulfill our need. We never stop for money. So number one, word of God save our life. Number two, fulfill our need. Number three, the word of God can save you from any tribulation. Any tribulation. His Holiness Bob Shinoda, he said, keep the Bible and Bible can keep you. <coughs> we have one day with, uh, with camp for uh, use and all the camp was about one psalm number 19. God, God will answer you in the day of tribulation. And this, this servant who was giving the topic, everything, and this verse in his mind all the time, mind all the time, mind all the time. The camp finish, he coming back home, he takes the freeway, and on the freeway, a mother and a father and her little daughter standing, you know, in the freeway waiting for any car, and the daughter, her hand slipped from her mom and started running, about 80 k per hour. He hit the daughter, she flipped on the car, and she backed, she never talked. He said, only what I can remember, the verse I learned in the camp and I was giving, God save us from any tribulation. Yes, tagib like a rap He said he took the daughter and he took her parents and went to the hospital. And they told him, don't worry, that's our fault, the daughter she ran, and he was very worried. After the doctor checked her, after everything, he found her, told her, she's all right, she cleared. He said, his hair was big hit, and she flipped in the top of the car. He said, she be all right, God heal her. 
and God saved her. He gave her even, he said to make sure they give her some juice to drink and after she drink and everything he makes sure 100%. So the word of God can save our life. The word of God can fulfill our need. The word of God can save our from any circulation. Last one, the word of God can heal our sickness. Can heal our sickness. Last story I want to end with this. One servant who was serving in one of the church in Masjid Gira Heliopolis. And this servant was very nice man, but they found cancer in his body. He just, his income just enough for him to make operation like this in Cairo. You need a lot of money. So the church started to announce everyone started to donate some money to make the operation. He went to the hospital to make the operation. He wants, uh, he reads the word of God. He's very good. He said, I need to go them to have confess and the mass before to attend the mass, have Holy Communion before the operation. They told him the operation next day you can't get out. He spoke to them, they allowed him. He went to the mass, he had confession and come back. He's ready for the operation was next day morning. Midnight he said he found three people wearing a white coat and coming knocking the door and open the door. He said must be they do more check because the operation next day. They come and two people next to this man in the middle and he told him just try to go. He found he started to talk to him verse by verse from Bible and told him repeat after us from Book of Revelation. He started to repeat, he started to repeat. He surprised, he said, how did you talk to me by verse from Bible, the doctor was. So he asked the one in the middle, he was bright, he told him, who are you? He said, don't ask about my name because my name, like a strange name. So he surprised, he started to talk to him, he said, I am a sinner. So the one in the middle said, you're not a sinner because today you have Holy Communion and confess. They left. Next day in the morning, they opened all his chest to get the cancer outside. They found nothing in his body. They said to heal the chest, they need six weeks, uh, six months to heal the chest back. So he sit in the hospital. He said, when he gets thirsty or hungry or anything, a little boy come to him to ask him, would you like any help, anything? They give him. They go and get him some water, some drink, some tea. And after what happened, after the two weeks, they found him surprised very quick, his chest healed. And he was looking for the boy to tell him thank you or anything. Wasn't there. His, his class he was served was sent to Abanok class. So he remembered. And these three people was one of them. Jesus, he said, why you ask about me? And my name is a marvelous name or stranger name. And he was giving him a verses from Book of Revelation. So really, if we need the eternal life, we have to stick to our word of life, the word of life in our Bible. Our church is very rich with the word of life, but nowadays we start getting a poor and poor for Bible. Abu Nafshay Kamil, the late one who was serving in Alexandria, he said, I love to see one day, instead we do master degree in accounting, master degree in medicine, master degree in anything, we start to concentrate and wake up until 3, 4 o'clock in the morning to study in the Bible. Because this is the one can give you master degree in heaven. This is the one can give you a degree in the heaven. But sometimes we, we, we spend all this time for study and study and study. But whatever in the end, how long we can I live here? 80, 90? But what about the life of eternal life? So we need to spend the time to know the Word of God. We need to have the Word of God in our life so we can be ready for the kingdom of God. Like God, they told them, he received them and they spoke to them about the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. And please pray for me.